Hello and welcome to the Merry Boozers RC channel, everybody. Wonderful to be here. As always, we've got a new bird sitting on the table and some new birds in the living room right now. <laughs> so how's everybody been doing out in Boozer world? I get to see y'all out on the Facebook Merry Boozer channel now. I love it. Seeing all of your custom airplanes and airbrushing videos out there. Me and Lori have been editing up a storm here lately. I hope y'all really enjoyed the P-47 videos from this week. Um, we really always do enjoy flying that airplane. One of my absolute favorites. And I've seen it from many of you that it's some of your favorite airplanes too. A lot of you guys have already tried that one. Um, it's been around a long time, but it's, it's just a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful airplane. A uh, little update on Lori's sister. She is out of the hospital now and home. Not home. Not home? No, they're, they're in a, a they're apartment in now. But they are out of the hospital at least now. So we've been getting to talk to her through Facebook. And, or not Facebook, but Snapchat. Snapchat. However you want to call it. Through the internet, we've been able to talk to her. And Lori's going to be going out to see her as soon as possible with the current situation we're all in. As you already know. Um, I have been trying some new modeling uh, paints, and I've really been enjoying them. Maybe I can try and show you this tonight. I had it sitting here. Yep. It's sitting right here. Um, I've been trying some of the Tamiya brand paints lately and really been enjoying them. I always wanted to try Tamiya. I just never bit the bullet and got full into it. But here lately, I've been giving it a shot, and I really do like their paints. Um... So, guys that are curious about it, I'm getting used to them first. I've been building a couple model kits. Um, before I show them on the channel, I wanted to work with the paint a little bit. Um, but we probably will be doing another model kit in the near future. Who knows? Maybe we'd be building a model kit the night we give away this F4. Because we're getting awful close. Uh, as you guys can see, we're 50 subscribers away from hitting the 3K goal. And at that point... One of you guys is going to be the new owner of that beauty right there. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to do it. Um, Lori, would you like to go grab our new family members? I'm going to slide this out of the way for just a second, just to be funny. We got some impressive new birds in today that I wanted to show you guys. She's going to go grab them. They're in the other room. We'll have to do an unboxing sometime for you guys. They just got here. Uh, and over the next two weeks, you might be hearing them because we're having to keep them in the living room right now. Here she comes. Set them right here. <laughs> you don't want to get in. We got new chickens! <laughs> They're like, what is going on? They're very friendly, <laughs> but they've been in the living room right now, and, uh, we got to keep them inside until they grow up a little bit so where they can go out to all their friends. But they're very fun little guys. <laughs> there you go. She's going to go show you guys. Oh no, one pooped on me. It's an, it's an inevitable situation when you're dealing with baby birds. It stinks. <laughs> Come here, little guy. So yeah, anyway... Look at them birds! Alright, I'll let you go put them back up. And I'm gonna, I knew, I knew it. We'd bring them over here and one would poop on me. Always. <laughs> Always. Can she make it without dropping one? <laughs> so there's some new chickens in the family right now. And uh, Lori's gonna bring me a paper towel because she loves me so I can clean up the poop in front of me right now. It's a little poop. <laughs> Oh, the boozers are farmers now. Well, we've actually had chickens for a while, and it just so happened that we got uh, asked if we would like a few new baby ones, and we said, sure, we'll do it. So we've always got animals of some sort around here, and it's a lot of fun. Before I slide this airplane back over, Lori's coming with a paper towel so I can clean up the poop. <laughs> like I said, you never know what you're going to get here on the Mary Boozers channel. You might get pooped on. Ah, why thank you, Lori. <laughs> Would you like to throw that away for me? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Wes pooped on the table. No, I didn't poop on it. 
<laughs> Not this time, at least. Um, another model kit that I've really been enjoying, guys, just to give you a little heads up. Uh, and Lori might be able to give me a top shot. We have been building... She's getting over there again. So I have been doing some model kits, and I've been trying to figure out the best way to do these videos. I, not as a live show, but actually it's just kind of a quick build review. So this is the uh, Bandai Models Woody from Toy Story. And as I was telling you, I've been trying some of those Tamiya paints. So this is a Tamiya wash, panel line wash. And if you can see, so there's an arm that I didn't wash versus an arm that I did wash. And even on your airplanes or your tanks or whatever else, this stuff is magic. So I'll definitely be showing some videos on that. His eyes move. It's kind of weird. You can make him do whatever you want. But the other really fun thing I've been doing with the Woody is if I grab my Panzer or whatever tank you want, if you guys are getting into Henlong, Woody fits absolutely perfectly in these tanks. I guess we'd have to go back to front shot for a second. Well, you don't have to. Whatever. But yeah, Woody fits perfect in the Henlong tanks, and it makes for some absolutely hilarious uh, pictures. There's a group of guys on here that are our moderators that I've been sending a ton of pictures to with these. But if you, if you get one of these, they're a lot of fun, and I did get the Buzz Lightyear kit to match. So, we're going to be building those in the future on the channel at some point. And just to show you again... Here's another kit I was doing this week. So, Lori, can we go top shot again? If you want painful, this is the smallest model kit I have ever built. So this is the Millennium Falcon that is the size of my thumbnail, if you can't see that. But uh, that was a little painful to paint. But uh, that, to me, a wash really makes it a lot easier. So I washed it, and then I was able to rub the, the wash off of it. And uh, put a little bit of the Silver Model Master on there. Really made a big difference. But, like I said, it's amazing if you actually look how small that actually is. So, crazy, right guys? So, I do really recommend that Model Master's paint. It's fantastic stuff. Sorry, that's still blurry. So, without further ado, back to RC airplanes. And we will start getting into... Our F-22. This is the high-performance version of the F-22. 4S uh, powered. It's got the 2836 3500 KV motor. I'm bad about the motor things, but it's the 4S version, the high-performance. If you guys are looking. Um, and it's a 64 millimeter bird. I had a chance to see Enoch, RC Jet Dude's son, fly the absolute poop off of, out of one of these. I mean, he was tearing up the sky at Joan All with one of these, and then he busted out the 90 millimeter, and he was a champ at it. So, I've really been wanting to try this airplane for a while, and my thought is we'll get it, we'll do some reviewing with it, and I think this will be a good first to second jet for uh, Lori. She has the Marlin currently, and she's been flying it. And I think this will be a good scale plane for her to start getting used to flying EDF. So if you guys are wondering, newer pilots getting used to EDF, you already have 4S batteries. The Marlin is an absolutely excellent first uh, EDF jet just to get your feet wet. You know, it doesn't have retracts. It does have flaps. Whereas this one has a full flying stab, which is something to get used to that's a little bit different. If you're more of wanting to do high alpha, this airplane will do high alpha really well. Um, but it still doesn't have retract, so it's a little bit less complex airplane that you don't have to worry about tearing up. And this one's $149, not $500 like some of the big jets. Timothy Tutant, thank you so much for that super chat, brother. So, open the box already. All right, all right. So, top shot, Lori, let's start getting into this thing. So, there it is. Beautiful, as always, box. And let's get ripping. Oh. Everybody always tells me, slow and sexy. Slow and sexy. Ta-da! Like I said, I have got to see a couple of these fly now at shows, and I've really been impressed with them every time. And I really feel like this is going to be 
a perfect airplane for Lori to start moving into some scale airplanes and getting her feet wet. And she doesn't have to worry about tearing this one up as bad because it's not near as expensive as most of the EDF jets that I have. Let me grab a knife. Should have had it to start with. I'm really bad about not doing that. But it's all good. There's one behind me. Chapow. So. Already, right out of the box, guys, even for a $150 jet, the finish on it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, you get a nice little pilot in here. I've seen the big F-22 also, and it is a very impressive airplane. So, here we go. Let's see if we can't get this body out of here. And carefully. Oh, sorry, hat. Hang on. Let's turn the hat around so I don't get it in the shot the whole time. Yeah, speaking of hat, everybody's asking if your hair still looks the same. Is my hair still the same? Oh, the nose wheel's already on it. Let's see. Does that answer the question about the hair? It's a little wild right now. But I think that answers the question of if I have the wild haircut still. <laughs> Oh, so here we go. We got this airplane out. Let me move the box for a second so we can talk about this. So, even for a small airplane, the detail of that pilot is excellent. There we go. Look at that pilot. That actually might be one of the better looking... Well, I'm right beside the microphone. That might be one of the better looking pilots I've actually seen come in a 64 millimeter airplane. I mean, the details on that guy are great. And your instrument panel. Looking really good. Um, the nose is foam. It is not a plastic nose and it does not come off. Once again, remember what we're talking about. This is a 4S jet, not a 6S F-22. Finish on it is fantastic as we've come to expect from all of our free wing models. And give you a shot of the bottom. The landing gear is removable and I probably will end up taking the landing gear off and we'd be in a hand tosser with this. But the first maiden flights or so we're probably going to have the gear on. 40 amp ESC. Vented so it'll stay nice and cool. I don't actually believe that's a cheater duct, funny enough. It is not. So this airplane actually does not have a cheater hole either. So this is just for the ESC cooling. It actually gets all the uh, air through the ducts, which is kind of interesting. I don't see that too often anymore. Fan access hatch. Servo plates which this one's sitting kind of funky. I have to look at that one. It's sitting a little bit funky right now, which I might be able to just make that fit a little bit better. But it ain't nothing that's gonna keep this airplane from flying, let me put it that way. Beautiful paint job though. Really do like it. Give you a shot of the booty. Have any of you guys got this airplane? Let us know in the comments. Give you a shot inside. So you've got your nose wheel steering servo right here. XT60 plug. Plenty of room though for a 2200 4S. That's going to be no issue getting one of those in there. Yeah. Sweet looking bird. You know, a lot of guys have told me this is probably going to be my new favorite 64 millimeter plane. Currently, my favorite is the 64 millimeter MiG uh, from Motion. Guniac, thank you so much, sir, for that super chat. Appreciate it as always. Set this over to the side real quick. We'll get the next part out of there. So, the next piece is the instruction manual. Who needs that? Just kidding. I'll probably end up using it. 
Man, it's, this one was boxed in here kind of interesting. So we've got our vertical stabilizers. Not sure if these glue or screw yet, because I haven't got into the manual. Looks like they're going to screw... No, there ain't no way that could screw on. But anyway, I'll have to look. There's one of your vertical stabilizers. Get off of here. No rudder on this airplane. They're just for pretty. Beautiful paint job. Wait, can I stick that in there? Will it stay? Maybe. Hey, hey. I did. Here's the other one. I see you guys in there talking about their uh, T-33s. Ours is supposed to be here tomorrow also. Our buddy Kevin got one and is going to let us unbox it for you guys. So we've got the F-20 or the F whatever it is, T-33 coming tomorrow. <laughs> My brain's on frazzle right now. We've edited about six videos this weekend. So Beautiful. And I'm just sticking them in. I'm not gluing them yet, but I'm just kind of sticking them on so you can get the overall shape here in a minute. Get the wings out. You keep getting told it's not glue, it's all screws. Is it all screwed together? Awesome. I haven't actually looked yet because I haven't got the manual, guys, so just remember that for a second. Yep, they're going to screw in right now. I might actually put this together tonight. It looks like it's one of those four screws and you're done kind of planes. So, anyway, wing. Beautiful paint. I mean, beautiful paint. Look at, look at how dense that foam is. I mean, I'm right up here on it, guys. They're, you can still see its foam, but, man, they're getting so good at painting these airplanes. I mean, I'm up on it right now for you to see that. And remember, this is a 64-millimeter cheapo airplane. And it's actually got hinges. It's a good-looking little airplane. It's kind of interesting how there's a spot right here, which I don't know what that was for originally, but there's actually a spot here for a control horn. So maybe that was an older version where they had the servos in here, but now they're out here. I don't know why. But see, there's actually a servo mount spot right there. Kind of interesting. Man, I haven't unboxed an airplane in a while, it feels like, on here. It's not because we haven't wanted to. Raha fans, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, see? Isn't that interesting? I don't know if I'm going to use these yet, because once again, I haven't looked at the manual yet, but there's another mounting spot for a uh, servo horn right here. But the actual servo horn's mounted right here. Weird, right? I don't know why that is. But, once again, beautiful paint job. Looks great. We've got our full flying stab. I believe this is the only one of the 64 millimeters with the full flying stab. I haven't seen the F-18 yet. I think the F-18 is the only 64 millimeter jet I haven't seen at this point. But, we will probably change that in the very near future because I love these 64 millimeter airplanes. I really do. They're always a good time. They're cheap fun. Um, you know, Lori can fly them without being too stressed out about it, which is the fun part too. Um, I need to get a new F-86 too. Uh, Dad put our F-86 in <laughs> in a nosedive at Joe Nall. Flew it into the sun, couldn't see it anymore, and I mean, it, it obliterated. It was one of the better crashes we've had in a long time. And unfortunately, it was not on film. Here's our main landing gear. Looks like they're uh, just going to clip in and clip out. So, oh, wait, and we got some control throw rods which are probably for the elevators. Yep, that's what they're for. And that is everything out of the box. Hey, Andrew, you're here. Lori, would you like to front view for just a second while I get everything out of the box? And Well, it's out of the box, but get everything kind of cleaned up here. We might just put it together tonight, guys. Um, I got to read the manual just a little bit. 
as we go along, but it looks like it's just going to screw together real easy. Speaking of screwing together, I guess I need a screwdriver. Watch out. It's kind of fun. We haven't done this in a while, guys. I just stand. There's one. Hey. Hey. Angie's in here. Hey, Angie. Angie Straley, guys, is Lori's little sister that we were telling you about that just got a new kidney. So everybody, give a round of emojis for Angie Straley in here right now. That's Lori's little sister. So we're happy to have her tonight hanging out with us as we put this little airplane together. And I'm going to get into the instruction manual so I can make sure I don't mess this up as I put it together for you guys. And my knife is rolling away. Hey. Oh, wouldn't you know my, my uh, knife is aluminum? There's a magnet right here on the stand, but I can't stick it to it. <laughs> Angie, wonderful to see you here. Look at all that love. I love it. I love it, guys. Thank y'all so much. All right. Let's put this thing together, huh? Let's light this candle. So, first step wants me to put the wheels on. I'm going to do that last because it looks like they're going to probably get in the way. We'll see. Let me see. Let me pick it up. Sometimes I put stuff together in a different order than what they recommend. Eh, don't look too bad. We'll just do the wheels real quick. So what's the deal? How many of you guys' flying fields are back to being open? Lori, kind of watch it for me. I'm going to have Lori yell at me here in a minute when I'm missing a comment because I am building this but she's reading everything so if you've got a question or an answer I will hear about it so question are you guys flying yet do y'all got your fields back how in the world oh it was like one of those this came like this Lori top shot for just a second have you ever done one of those puzzles where they're stuck together and you've got to figure out which way to get them out if you get them just in the right position, they come apart. <laughs> but anyway, I got that and I was like, what is going on? But yeah, I got it. Anyway. Ha ha! So, let's see here. I believe that goes like that. So, wheels, wheels, wheels. Everybody gets mad when I put them on backwards too. Ryan says his field never closed. When the axe is open, but with restriction. Dennis is never closed. Charles Restavito uh, is never closed. Oh, wait, they're labeled right and left. Victor went to a backup location. Light burner flew yesterday. So a lot of you guys are flying. That's good to hear. Roy flew in his yard. Okay, so this keys in like that. And then, put some more fruit in here. well, I changed my mind, and I'm going to put them on. If I can get everything to... Jimmy says his street never closed. So, okay. i got to figure all this out now. That's the hard part. This is why I don't usually put things together live on the channel. So I know that goes in there like that. And it goes... <laughs> like meh but I can't unless I got the wrong one but it just looks wrong to me to go no it's got to be that way you guys ever try and put something together well you can't see me right now live I know Ryan gets this man sometimes you know how you got to look at something and figure out exactly how something goes together sometimes I uh I'm in one of them situations where I'm trying to figure this out. I know that goes like that. And then that... Aha! You will not beat me, plane! Alright. So I got the wheel in. I figured it out. Now i got to figure out what screw goes in there. One thing that if I could change about all of these RC planes, and I know there's some other people that are going to agree with me on this, when there's two different size screws 
The kit refers to them always as A and B. Why can there not be an A and a B sticker on here? I know it tells me what millimeters it is, but I'm American and I don't know what a millimeter is and a screw. And... <laughs> anyway, my little bit there, because right now I'm looking at these look like wings, don't know, don't know. And that's the hardest part on these for me. And just to show you, Lori. So I get this size, this size, and then there's two different sizes in this bag. So if manufacturers are watching right now, can I make one suggestion that would make everybody so happy? And I've seen it on Ikea stuff. Can we put ABC on here and refer to the screws as ABC in the manual? Print them on there with a laser printer. If you can print this beautiful paint job, you can do it on a bag that says ABC. <laughs> does he have a mohawk? I don't know, does he? So, anyway, I'm trying to figure out what screws go in here. There's four of them, so it's got to be these four. Has to be... Anyway, I don't know if anybody else feels the same way on that, but that's something that's drove me crazy since the beginning of time that I wish they would label those differently. Also, you don't have one of these. These. Six-in-one screwdriver. Best friend in the world. I've got two different sizes of flatheads and two different sizes of Phillips. All in one screwdriver. Magnetized to make your life easy. That little bitty screw. <laughs> I can just take and go, boop, like that now, and then screw it right in. Favorite screwdriver on the planet is a six-in-one screwdriver. I really like this one. This is a cobalt. The only reason I don't like it is it's all metal, which feels really good in your hand, but if you do any electrical work, you can electrocute the poop out of yourself with this. Um, other than that, if you're not doing anything electrical with it, it's a good airplane, or I mean a good screwdriver. She's trying to tell me something. The light burner. Thank you for the super chat. Lori is over there waving her arms around and moving stuff all over the screen, so I'll see it. See, there we go. Octane 209 agrees with me. Us Americans aren't smart enough to figure out that millimeter stuff. Thank you. I agree. But I did finally figure out how to put the wheel on. So that's a good start. Mm. So I don't know if you guys like the building on the channel. It always just takes me so long is the only thing. But I know it's funny to watch somebody fumble around with all this stuff. Like I can't figure out what I did with the little cover for the wheel right now. The other cover. Aha! Aha! There we go. So, I did that. So, in the future, if you get one of these, top shot for a second. Oops, wrong top. Oop, wrong top. Here we go. So, the wheel looks like this. You got the little cover. And then the hatch is actually marked right and left on the inside. R. And there's a little notch cut out right there there that goes around this bar here so it sets in there like so and then it keys in to a little point right here so you kind of gotta hold your mouth just right while everybody on the internet's watching you slide that in there and then that clips down just like that no big deal when you know what you're doing. And then you got two little screws that go in. Right, like, yes. Don't get it all the way tight until you get your other screw in. This is for anything you ever build. Put all your screws in first, get them started, and then tighten everything up. Make your life a whole lot easier. Lori's going to put the product page over on the screen for a second while I'm doing this. Um, kind of show you what it is, where we got it from. 
after she gets it finished up. If you guys are interested in one, these are from Motion RC. This is their 64 millimeter 4S high performance version. Um, beautiful little plane. They also have a 3S version of it. Um, I have not seen the 3S fly. I imagine it's okay, but I've seen the 4S fly and it looks fantastic. So I'm sliding the wing on right now. If I can figure out how to get the carbon. It's a tight fit. There it goes. Line up yellow to yellow, brown to brown. Push my servo connector in. I mean, these things are super easy to put together, guys. It's not rocket science. You get it. But if I can put one together live here with you, you can see how easy this actually is. Put that in there. That in there. Make sure your wires aren't pinching as you put your wing halves together. Just like that. Let's get the other wing half on. Lori, if you want to go back to the top shot while I put this other wing half on, that'd be great. I'm going to walk around the other side since you don't have to worry about seeing my face either right now. So you get your carbon fiber spar in. Uh-oh. I just noticed that my servo connector is up in the airplane. There it is. Take that. Line your colors up. Yellow to yellow. Brown to brown. You'd be surprised how many times I've got that wrong in the many years I've done this. Think there's a bad servo in the airplane, pull it back apart. You know, if you ever think you have a bad servo, guys, on a brand new airplane, very first thing you want to check is that you have your polarities correct around the airplane. There it goes. And then it'll snap in. Once you feel that snap, that's in there. I don't know how many times I've done that on an airplane. Put it all the way together and go, oh, the servo doesn't work, and it ends up just being that. So there's our wing halves together. Let me flip it over real quick, and we'll put our screws in. I could get the servo checker out real quick, but I believe it's probably going to work. Make sure our holes are all lined up. That one is. That one is. That one is. Grab our wing bolts. Missing anything exciting in the comment section yet, Lori? Um, Wes, why don't you fly, wait, that's a okay. Why don't you fly this one when you did the 64 millimeter comparison? I didn't have it at the time. Um, whoever was asking that, I don't see it on the screen yet. Lori's asking Air me. Hammer. Air Hammer wants to know why I didn't do this one when I was doing all the 64 millimeter planes. Well, right now, Air Hammer, <laughs> most of the airplanes you see on this channel I purchase and at the time I didn't own this airplane or I would have loved to have done it um, like I said out of the 64 millimeter line currently the only ones I haven't had a chance yet to fly man the screwdriver does not fit that I'm gonna try and find a little bit fatter screwdriver real quick guys just because that one is not fitting that screw worth the darn All right, there we go. That's the ticket. So I didn't have one at the time just because I didn't have one. And, you know, like I said, I got to buy everything for the most part. Um, we have been lucky enough to get a few builds sponsored. Uh, we have a P61 right now that Pilot Ryan purchased for us. Uh, we're very thankful to have it. We just need to get a good day to go fly the darn thing. We've been trying all week, but there's a hurricane just off the shore of uh, Florida right now and the wind has not been cooperative at all this week for flying airplanes um, but the build is finished um, I'm trying to think we got a chance to do the Fiesler Storch from Motion RC they donated that to us but for the most part most of the airplanes you see on the channel we've purchased ourselves and it's not that we don't want to do everything there is <laughs> Lori thought she just canceled out all of uh 
the show right then. She thought she exited out of uh, stream. Would have been bad. She's over there freaking out. But, hey, we want to do them all. Give us time, and we'll get every one of them done that's possible. Um, because we love everything and anything in our seat. We also have trucks and tanks now that we've been trying to do. Maybe eventually we'll get a boat on the channel. Well, we have had a boat on the channel. Uh, it's not sitting here right now. It was earlier. Um, we have done a sailboat before. Me and Lori love our sailboats, actually. And her friends really, really love sailboating. So you'll probably see some more sailboats sometime in the future. Copters, crawlers, and planes. Thank you very much for that super chat. All right, so this thing's almost done. Let's see here. The tail has got two itty bitty tiny grub screws that I imagine are gonna go through right now. Let me get to that part in the destruction manual. All right, so we got that, we get that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I gotta make sure I do this part right, because if a fall, if a if your uh, tail doesn't stay on, you're not having a good day. So it has a flat, I believe, on it. Does it go? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we go. The tail. Interesting. Did these not turn? Oh, okay. So this goes, I see how they did it. This goes in and then the screw rides in that channel in there. Okay. So let me get it open real quick and we'll explain this with a top shot if you want to get ready, Lori. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. uh, right now. Okay. So. Of course, this is the smallest screw ever, so before we get started, there it is. This is probably the last time you see it, because whenever I put one of these kind of screws in, I always drop it and lose it. So, let's really pray and hope that I don't do that. What that does, just to show you, it's kind of an interesting idea here. So on this plane, this is actually a fixed point. Normally these spin on a bigger jet, what that's going to do is this keys in, uh, yep, and then that little hole is going to have that tiny screw in it, and that screw is going to ride in that channel, and that's going to keep this on. So, here we go. Oh no, I lost it. Oh god. I'm just kidding, not yet. Just give me a few minutes and I will though. So, the next problem is this screwdriver doesn't fit that. Man, I need a tiny, tiny, tiny screwdriver for this. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay, I got one. Alright, I gotta magnetize this because I really don't want to drop this screw. Once again, the fun of building something live, right guys? Alright, it's on there. Oh, yes, Avinia. and I got it on the first try. Oh. All right, too tight. Back it off just a hair. Nice and free. That's what you want. You want these to be nice and free. If you tighten that up too much, this won't be free. But there you go. Not coming off, feels very secure. That's how that works. And let me get the other side real quick. Where'd that screw go? So the question is, where are the, oh, never mind. I know where those two screws go. Dewey. That's gonna hold the verticals on. I should have probably put those on first, but we're gonna do this anyway. All right, so there's that. 
Now I may not hook up my control rods yet guys just because I want to hook up my servo checker first to make sure they're centered. Might stick them in there for you, but. Oh, first try. Oh, I'm going to drop it. Oh, no. I'd cry a little bit. I'm telling you. You want something exciting, guys? Turn on your live show camera and try and build one of these in front of it. It is uh, always exciting. Put it that way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, oofta, look at that, eh? Oh. Let's see, I might be able to just stick these on here just to stick them on there for now so that it looks pretty sitting on the table. But I am not gonna hook them up until I have had a chance to uh, turn on my servo checker, like I said. Oops, that ain't gonna work like this though. Yoink. You'll hear the baby chickens right now. Holy cow, that's tight. That's what she said. Sorry, I'll be help myself with the little dorky. Wow, that's pretty close if that's actually how that goes. Yoink. We'll just put these on here to look pretty right at the moment, but like I said, I'm not going to clasp this until I have a chance to fire up my servo checker. <laughs> what? The birds. I wonder if they can hear them. Oops. Can y'all hear the baby chicks right now? They're going crazy. So just to hold that for now to look pretty, that's actually how that goes. Uh, I probably have one of the servo clips that I can put on this just to protect it. Um, so that holds the elevators on. And now we've got our rudders. Uh, that one goes there. Gingerly slide that in. It keys into that little hole. Same thing on the other side. Goes in, keys in. Now we're gonna flip it over and put our screws in from the bottom and hopefully it all doesn't fall out. Oh, that presents a new issue. It don't fit on the stand worth a darn with those on there upside down. There they are. Whew, I thought I lost the screws for a second there. Oh gosh. You need your little metal. I know, I know, I'm a terrible person. I don't keep my own advice. Right. There he goes, screwing it in. Remember this is foam. You don't have to go just absolutely crazy when you're putting this stuff together. All right, I got it, Lori. She's put together. That's how easy that was. Look at that, all screwed together. I love it. I thought there was gonna be some gluing on this one, but nope. She done. All right, front view, Lori. Let's talk about the final process. Like I said, guys, I did not clip these in until I can put some power to the servos and make sure they're centered. Um, I always recommend you do that, actually. But, ta-da, that wasn't bad, not bad at all, you know, I have enough uh, servo channels, I wonder how hard it would be to do Televons on this thing and make it really wild, because with the full flying stab, I bet you could make this thing wild. Don't make it too wild on me. I, I, we, we could tame it down for you, Lori, it'll be alright. But uh, I've seen Enoch, like I said, Steve Hodge's kid, fly one of these, and he was high alphaing it everywhere and having a great time. You know, I know this isn't an HSD T-33, but there'll be one here tomorrow. <laughs>
a foam be nice RC air marshal. What'd you guys think? I mean, the build was nice and easy on it. These 64 millimeter jets, I know some of you guys are way past it, but for a newer pilot, these are fantastic. I mean, this is a good way to get into it and get your feet wet without having to spend a ton of money, you know? And let's go on and throw it out there one more time. We're only 50 subscribers away before that plane behind me gets given away. And for you guys that haven't seen it yet, I guess we could hold it up real quick too. Let's throw that out there real quick. If you weren't here for the live show when we painted this plane, yeah. Ta -da. look at that bad boy. Just think, one of you is going to be the owner of this airplane. I love hearing that, right? All Papa dotted and pimped. If you don't like Papa Dotton, well, please don't try and win it. Give her a top shot. And I think we're going to maybe even Papa Dot our little... Well, there really wouldn't be rivets on an F-22, so maybe we won't do that. <laughs> even did the missiles. Look at that. Uh, and the drop tank. Every inch of this thing, man. He went crazy when he did this one. There ain't nothing missing. And I do have the uh, eagles that go on here. Um, one of them was messed up. We ordered a new sticker sheet to fix them. Um, I may leave them off and just put them in the box for whoever gets this airplane. But yeah. There's that. GB Linden, you going to win this thing or what? Look at those silver dots. Ah. Anyway, it's a beaut. Remember, the only way to enter it is to watch the show. It's going to be given away randomly one night without warning. That's the only way to win it, guys. You just got to be here. You guys that are here every week supporting us, that's who that airplane's for, not some random person. So just remember that in the next coming weeks, we're getting really close. Um, we're not going to announce the night we're doing it. Nothing. It may be on the most boring episode I can choose. I might be painting a Buzz Lightyear. Who knows? Or a Woody. Or who knows? So I'm just telling you, the only way to win that airplane is to be here and be watching it. So that's how I'm going to tell you. And it's going to go like that. Like it's going to be like, all right, we're giving this away randomly in the middle of the show. And 15 seconds goes by and that plane's already given away. So that's how that's going to work when it happens. Show the bullet holes. Well, Dad, I already put it back behind me. It's very difficult to do that. But it does have bullet holes on it. And we will be showing them off like crazy in the few weeks. Because, um, oh, I also have an afterburner for it. So whoever wins that is going to get an afterburner too. I just haven't put it in there yet. So, but when we actually go to give it away, it will have an afterburner in it. <laughs> just a little heads up on that so I'm trying to check out what's going on in the chat what do you guys think are y'all excited to see this one ripping um, we've been doing a lot of the e-flight stuff so it's nice to get back over to some free wing I always love that I mean that's a cool looking little jet too especially for the size it is the Fred Baron to infinity I'm beyond Hey, he's right here. He's just not put together yet. To infinity and beyond. Uh... Oh no, she doesn't have it on top. No, sorry. I've lost my mind, guys. It happens. I'm inside. Let's see. I haven't had to leave my house in four weeks. It's been amazing, actually. And uh, I'm very thankful to have been able to work from home over the past few weeks. Um, me and Lori are both thankful that uh, both of us have been able to keep our jobs through this whole ordeal. And uh, we really do thank you guys for sticking with us through the whole thing. And um, we really are happy to be here. And I can't figure a better hobby to ever have been in than this. And it just amazes me the, the community we've built behind us. You know, and, and there's a whole list of guys, you know, Dave Marshall with the... Uh, RC Air Marshal channel, um, 
you got the Flight Club of Jeff's Custom RC and uh, uh, I'm trying to just keep them all straight. It's crazy to me. <laughs> Raven Rock Machine and Aviation. There we go. I knew it would come back to me. I'm hot. I'm crazy. I'm wild. What can I say? So you got Tuesday night with those guys. Uh, Wednesday is GB Linden, uh, where we can all drink wine together. <laughs> Let's see, Thursday is Hangar 51, the eight-hour show. Uh, let's see, Friday is Dave's RC, which he never comes to visit me anymore because he doesn't like me. I'm just kidding, Dave, if you're here. <laughs> Saturday's all right, and then you got me. So I love it. I hope that RC Air Marshal does us another live fly-in because I've been jonesing to fly with him lately. And he never wants to do a fly-in with me anymore. So I'm just saying, I think we need to do that. What time is it right now, guys? It's 9 o'clock. I don't know how to put the game on the show right now. But we're getting ready to wrap this up. I tell you what. I will play Real Flight for the next hour. I'm going to make a lobby in there for the Merry Boozers. And it's going to be open and you guys come and fly with us and I'll fly for an hour long. I still have to go to work tomorrow but I promise you right now if you want to come fly with us and you have real flight I'll make sure and pick a field that everybody can play on and all that. Let's do some flying tonight guys because I've been jonesing for it all week and it's always a great time to get on there and fly with you. I'll have my microphone on you can come talk to us. Dave Marshall you gonna be there? Huh? I think GB Linden has it now, too. So, GB, get on there. Let's have some fun tonight, guys. Let's be fun. Wes, it's coming soon. We're going to have a virtual fly-in on the first Monday of every month now. There we go. I like hearing that. I like hearing that. So, if you do have real flight, 9, 8, and 7... Air Marshal can correct me. I believe any of those can fly on there. I'm going to start one up here in a second. Mary Boozer RC, you'll see me on there. Y'all come fly with us tonight. We'd really enjoy you being there. I don't know how to stream it, or I would. I just need to figure it out. I hope you enjoyed our little unboxing of this airplane. You will be seeing our flight review coming shortly. And guys, did we download the NAL map? I have not. So it's going to be on a regular map that everybody has. Sorry. Trust me, I would like to be at NAL also, but I just want to put it on something that everybody can play on and not have any issues. So, without further ado, we're going to turn this off, give us about five minutes to get set up, and I'll have a Mary Boozer's RC virtual fly-in going on Real Flight, and you guys come join us, talk to me all you want on there. It's a little one-on-one -on -one thing. It's always a lot of fun. I'll see y'all shortly. Without further ado, five, four, three, two, one, farm animal boozers! <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.